Okay, so in finding the open circuit time constant, we're going to find the time constants associated with all of the individual small capacitors in the circuit. And in order to do that, we need to find the resistances associated with the capacitances. So what we have here are a bunch of small time constants that we're going to call tau sub i. They're equal to r sub i times c sub i. And what we need to do is find R sub i, which is the equivalent resistance that the capacitor sees. This is a, a metric that we're going to find that kind of tells us how fast or how long it takes to charge the individual capacitor through the resistor that it sees. So in order to do this, all small capacitors, except for the one that we're analyzing, will be open circuited. This makes sense. Any small, any small capacitor that's not being analyzed at high frequency has a relatively high impedance, so we can treat it like an open circuit. All independent voltage sources should, all independent sources should be eliminated. And much as we've done for our other small signal analysis, this means that voltage sources like DC voltage sources are shorted. Even our AC voltage sources are shorted in this case. And our current sources are open. And all very large capacitors, and these are going to be capacitors in the nanofarad to microfarad range, are also shorted. Again, this makes sense because a large capacitor at high frequency has a relatively low impedance. Next, we're going to replace the capacitor that's under test, the one that we're uh, analyzing the resistance for, with a voltage source. Our voltage source is going to be V sub x. And we're going to calculate the current I sub x flowing through V sub x. In this way, we're going to find R sub i is equal to V sub x over I sub x. So let's look at an example. Here we have a common emitter amplifier. And our analysis for the high frequency pole is going to be using the small device capacitances that are associated with the transistor. So in this case, it's the capacitances at the junctions. C pi is the base emitter junction capacitance, and C mu is the base collector junction capacitance. So in this case, let's look at an analysis just for C pi. All right, so we've drawn an equivalent circuit where we've shorted our voltage sources and large capacitors, and we've opened our small capacitor C mu. We're going to replace C pi, the capacitor under test with a voltage source, V e sub x, and we'll calculate the current that flows through V e sub x named I sub x. Now, in this case, we don't really need to worry about what's happening on the collector side of the amplifier because without the capacitor C mu, we don't see much impact from that side of the circuit. Now, we can find the resistance that the capacitor sees using a KCL analysis at the base node, or we can look and see really that from the perspective of this voltage source, all the resistances are in parallel with it. So we can say R sub I is equal to R sub S in parallel with R sub N in parallel with R sub Pi from the device. And then our time constant, tau sub I, is just equal to the capacitor we were analyzing, C Pi, times that resistance. Now, the next step would be to repeat finding the time constant for all of the little capacitors in the circuit, all of the C sub I's. In this case, we would have to repeat just for C mu. All right, finally, we need to find the time constant and ultimately its impact on the frequency response. In open circuit time constant analysis, we're going to assume that we have one dominant pole. Now, this is generally a good assumption, but there are some special cases, for instance, when we're using feedback where this might not be a good assumption, uh, particularly if we have two poles that are spaced relatively uh, closely together uh, and one isn't dominant over another one. But for the time being, our assumption is going to be that the high frequency shape of the circuit has one pole and it looks like one over one plus S over omega H. And omega H is given as one over 
the sum of all of the individual time constants in the circuit. All right, in the next video, we're going to look at an example.